The technology that goes into your computers is innovating quickly, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Multiple companies, especially AMD, have moved past the paradigm of just relying on clock speeds and node shrinks. They're going with smarter architectures, and I think there's a lot of evidence RDNA 3 and 4 will be a lot smarter than 2, even though I know, people, I know, RDNA 2 isn't even officially unveiled, and I'm already talking about what might go into the architectures after RDNA 2. And actually, the spine of the script I'm reading from for this video comes from a lot of recent comments I've been receiving about the hype around the SSDs in the next-gen game consoles, right? How will... Our gaming PCs keep up with them. Well, first of all, let's just get this right out of the way. You're going to need a faster SSD than a SATA or a hard drive. I mean, Microsoft has literally said that their next-gen games won't be able to boot from hard drives. And if they won't boot from hard drives on Xbox, they're not going to boot from hard drives on your personal PC either. So that's just that when it comes to can I still use a hard drive. The answer is no, and SATA drives might not cut it that well for much longer either. But honestly, with Gen 3 SSDs getting so cheap, I'm not really sure what the complaint is. For next-gen AAA games, you might just have to dish out $60 for half a terabyte of storage for a few games, and you can delete them and re-down them or back them up to an external hard drive to reinstall later when it's needed. And I mean, even this SSD I'm looking at here has uncompressed data, you know, in between the compressed and uncompressed data rates of the Xbox Series X. So this will keep up with the Xbox series x and it's not very expensive okay but then this gets us to some of the more worrisome comments i've seen or the people saying them seem extra worried and that's about the capabilities of the playstation 5's ssd and let's be clear amd did partner with both sony and microsoft to give them exactly what they want for a next gen console and at least sony wanted a new paradigm in memory management using a solid state drive that is so fast with extra controllers that it can be used as ram and this is not just for loading but for rendering as well and seeing this there are a lot of people in the comments right now asking well if it can actually be used to speed up rendering and access times what the hell hell is PC going to do? And first of all, we do need to wait for full tech demos from Sony to take them even remotely at their word until they show full games on a working console that does what they say it does. It's nothing but hype for now. But at the same time, I did hear some pretty incredible things from countless devs I talked to as I was putting together my big PlayStation 5 analysis video. They, in mass and consistently, told me it was not just about load times, that it would be used for many, many things that just weren't possible before. And in fact, if we just look at DDR2, for example, we can see that, yeah, the PlayStation 5's uncompressed bandwidth, which is important if you're going to use storage as memory, you cannot compress many, many types of data you would put into RAM it's as fast. It's as fast as DDR2. The PlayStation 5 uncompressed data is effectively a giant pool of 800 gigabytes of DDR2. So is PC gaming about to be hashtag dead? No. Consoles are never going to kill PC gaming, at least not for the foreseeable future, in my opinion, and neither are smartphones either. The solution is actually... Pretty straightforward. AMD's worked on this type of a product before. It's called the Radeon Pro SSG, and they had it offered in one and two terabyte flavors for 8K workloads. And it actually did work. But you know, three years ago, AMD had to use four NVMe drives to get the required bandwidth. Whereas right now, through co development with Marvel and AMD, Sony's been able to come up with a Cheaper solution, you know, it's a dual host controller with a Gen 4 SSD that has the same bandwidth as what previously required for slower SSDs. And so it's a lot cheaper now. And while AMD was bringing this to professional cards first, they have been waiting for it to get cheaper to move it into the main stream. As explained in this excellent article on Tom's Hardware, links in the description, AMD has realized from feedback from developers that they want a flat pool of fast 
memory to access data from. And that's because moving data between really any components wastes tons of energy and CPU cycles. Some of the greatest advances really in the past decades have always been from minimizing latency between components. And so a lot of people need to forget about PlayStation for a second. AMD has been talking about this way of scaling performance for 8K gaming and VR workloads since before the PS4 Pro even came out, and I believe they're going to use it very soon on other products as well. And this is when I get into the RDNA part, what I think's coming in a year or two. So I've had a lot of not so subtle hints dropped to me recently that, well, frankly, both Sony and Microsoft co-developed parts of future RDNA architectures and that, well, they both have all of the feature sets they need from RDNA 2, there were some things, at least specifically from Sony, pioneered that AMD said, hey, we want that. Now, if I knew <laughs> specifically and exactly what they were, I would obviously tell you, because those would be huge bombshells, but I, I don't know specifically what it is. But if I'm thinking of what Sony's working on, what would they have pioneered in their custom RDNA 2 architecture that AMD may want for the future? Well, first thing that comes to mind is VR. I know they're going to unveil PSVR 2 within 12 to 24 months, and I'm sure there are some optimizations in their architecture for making good use of rendering, you know, for two eyes at once to not waste resources. So I'm sure AMD said, hey, we want that. But what else could there be? Well, the only other thing I can come up with is, you know, a more advanced version of what AMD was already pioneering with the Pro SSG. And so, yeah, I think that's what's coming in RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 graphics cards. And to be clear, I don't have information confirming it's in RDNA 3 or RDNA 4. I just know AMD's been wanting to put this in mainstream cards for a while, and they plan to continue to increase efficiency by 50%, roughly every one and a half years. And considering RDNA 3 will be out by the end of 2022, I would say, yeah, it's probably RDNA 3. So yeah, are you guys ready for 256 gigabyte? consumer graphics cards i know what you're saying that would be enormously expensive and that's there's no way that's coming anytime soon and you're right it's not coming soon it's not coming this year and it, it might not even make it out next year but i think this is a logical conclusion for a next step for gaming builds right what do you do to eliminate load times and access times remember the longer the access time the more joules of energy you're wasting rendering a game so so this isn't just about load times it's about efficiency as well to keep up with the console's load times and access times all amd really needs to wait for is gen 4 ssds to max out their interface about seven gigabytes per second and that should be done this year samsung's already working on it and then you don't need a terabyte for a gaming card, 256 gigabytes should be more than enough. And so I just, I think that's what's gonna happen here, right? I think to add just 256 gigabytes of lightning fast Gen 4 storage would be like an extra 50 to $100 late next year, late 2021. I mean, come on, the fastest M.2 drives on the market right now aren't that expensive for a terabyte considering how much storage used to cost just five years ago. And for half a terabyte, you just spend 120. I just have no problem believing that the faster drives coming out soon, if they were half this capacity, would be half this cost next year. And adding $60 on top of a $700 graphics card for these types of features just seems so worth it. And if that made load times a thing of the past and also got you other rendering benefits, you know, effectively making the VRAM capacity less of an issue, right? You could, I mean, that would even just save you money on how much actual raw HBM or GDR6 VRAM you need to put on the card. You could maybe skim by with eight gigabytes of GDR6 for an 8K gaming card. You could add 256 gigabytes of a Gen 4 SSD in the background. You could easily have high-end cards debut with half a terabyte of storage, and you could advertise this as having the capacity for up to five quick boot games, right? You could, it's non-volatile storage, right? These SSDs won't need to reload a game 
uh, every time you boot up your PC. So you could basically install five games on a high-end graphics card for instant load times and just swap them out when you want to be playing a different five games more often on the next week. And then for mid-range cards, maybe you go down to 256 gigabytes. Now it's even cheaper, and now you can fit, you know, two games or something, and then maybe 64 gigabytes for the you know, lower mid-range cards. But that's the other thing. I don't think you're going to have 100 gigabyte games take up 100 gigabytes of storage on the graphics cards. You only need to install the parts of the game that the graphics card needs to reference. But then you might say to me, okay, so that might work for the files the graphics card needs to access, but isn't the PS5 saving a lot of cycles with this fast SSD also? And the answer is yes, but you'll still have another SSD with its own controller that the CPU can reference without bothering the SSD on the graphics card. It's not as efficient as having a single SSD, but it certainly has a brute force advantage. It's pretty simple, right? I mean, if you just have a fast Gen 3 SSD or even a, a mid-range Gen 3 SSD, the CPU will be referencing data from that at the same time the graphics card is referencing data from the SSD on its package. So, so that should make up for it, right? Even if your boot SSD isn't as fast as the PlayStation 5s, well, whatever. You have multiple memory controllers in a desktop, so they'll be doing different things at the same time, and yeah, it might not be as efficient. It might use more energy, and it might cost more, but it'll more than make up for the advantages the PS5 has if you can reference it with multiple memory controllers at the same time. But to be clear, I do think brute force will only get you so far. If AMD is working on large pools of unpackaged memory for graphics cards, they're certainly doing the same types of things soon with CPUs. And in fact, that's why I think they discontinued Store Me. They're probably working on an entirely superior system that abandons the old paradigms, probably utilized by Zen 4. And isn't that always how PC solved these issues? Like, I remember when the PS4 came out, people were like, you can't get a PC this powerful. It has 8 gigabytes of GDR5. And it's like, well, PC gaming solves things through brute force. Maybe you have 8 gigabytes of GDR5 total, but we got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 with its own memory controller and another 8 gigabytes on the graphics card alone. Right? That's the solution. Brute force may cost a bit more, and it may not be quite as efficient, but it could be more capable once we fully see what a gaming PC with these technologies would look like. And again, you know, you could skimp on your boot SSD because a lot of the components of loading will be into your fast graphics cards SSD. Now, I think there's no way around it. There may be an awkward 6 to 12 months, maybe mid-2021 through early 2022, where, yeah, there's just some disadvantages with some third-party games in some ways on PC. But I don't see it being some showstopper. And, you know, that's the cost of progress. That's just the cost of progress. There's some awkwardness, but on the other end of it, we get bigger, better looking games with more enemies that are smarter and in worlds that are just much more alive. You know, quad cores are going to have a lot of problems soon, too. You're just going to have to not game on a quad core soon if you want to play the latest AAA games. And we've been neglecting storage. But there are solutions, solutions that will be brought to PC gamers and it is my opinion that it will be brought with RDNA 3 or at the very least 4 by just letting you store entire game's worth of information on a blazing fast SSD that really only costs about an extra 50 bucks built right onto that graphics card. And trust me, NVIDIA is working on the same thing as well. They're not stupid. They're not going to let AMD get away with any lightning in a bottle situation. Although I don't think it's going to be an Ampere when NVIDIA announces their new architecture on May 14th. And also, I don't know if they'll be able to do it better than AMD with AMD's experience. I don't know. It'll be interesting, and it'll be fun to watch, and I will, of course, cover it. If you enjoyed this video, please, of course, like it, subscribe it, ring the bell button, whatever other yada yada it, YouTube's making you do now to follow me, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Today, a new die shrink came out analyzing the whole bulldozer and pile driver fiasco. All right, thanks for watching.